It has been a while since I last did a tutorial, but here I am, and I'm here to teach you about how to draw hair. So, to start, I should probably go into what you should not do on drawing hair. You might be doing these things and be really frustrated with how the how hair looks when you draw it, or you might be doing one of these things and not even know it. I I definitely did these things when I was learning how to draw, and they're totally normal, and I think everyone does them. Um, but I guess I'll just go into them so you kind of know what to avoid, if you can. The first one, and I, w I remember distinctly <laughs> being taught this in art class when they taught us about drawing hair. Number one, avoid drawing every single little strand in hair. This often happens when people are trying to draw like um, realism or from real life, is our eyes can focus on all these little tiny strands that make up our hair. Um, and if you try to draw every single one of them in, it's just going to look kind of messy and stiff and it's going to look too textured and it's not going to quite look like hair, especially like, um, it's not going to look like every texture of hair that you're trying to make as well. Because you can definitely get an effect from drawing all of the strands and if that's what you're going for, that's awesome. However, it doesn't give you that really nice flowy look to hair. Um, and it's just because it's too much detail and the movement can get lost and it can just be too textured and too cluttered. I'll go into it later about what you should be doing, but moving on to the next thing, two and three, they're kind of similar, honestly, especially the way I drew them. I'm always worried about, like, my examples of what not to do is of, like, I, I don't know, I'm always worried that I'm drawing either things, like, too good or, like, in my later examples on what to do, I draw those poorly. I don't know. Anyways, I'll stop being self-conscious. So the next thing to avoid is to draw kind of shapeless hair. I had this trouble a lot when I was early on in comics, not really knowing how hair, well, like how hair worked at all. So I just kind of draw random like clumps of hair that kind of looked like a neat shape. And as well, you should also avoid drawing really stiff straight stick hair. The example I drew is with long hair, but it can happen with any kind of hair. Um, avoid having it really stiff and look really, like, hard and not, like, it doesn't move because hair moves and it's generally pretty soft and moves around with the air and how you move. So make sure you're not drawing super stiff hair that doesn't look like it moves at all, no matter what the shape. Okay, so what should you do? Well, first, you better go grab your references. I spelled references wrong. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but go grab a whole bunch of photos of hair. Draw your friends. Draw your family. Draw whoever. These are just random photos I found on Pinterest. Just grab a whole bunch of different hairstyles or whatever hairstyle you're trying to learn how to draw. Just grab a bunch of photos and start studying. That's how you should start any learning how to draw a new thing is always grab reference, whether it's photographs or from life. So to understand kind of how hair works, I'm just going to go in, do some red lines on top of these photos to kind of show how to decipher hair. So the most important thing about hair, and this will help you avoid the drawing every strand problem, the first thing you should really notice about hair is that hair kind of falls into locks. No matter what kind of hair it is, uh, even super short hair always has locks and clumps and the strands of hair will group together. Um, so in this first example with this fella, you know, he's got these big wavy locks of hair and they kind of fall into like waves and curls. So instead of drawing every single strand within these curls, you know, I'm just doing maybe the outline and then a few lines that define the rest of the shape. Um, so it's really important that when you're looking at a hairstyle and trying to learn how to draw it, break it down into shapes, into different locks. You know, if someone has very, very curly hair, there might be more locks than someone who has, say, like, like smooth, straight hair. But even then, that just depends on, like, the texture of their hair. But whatever you're, whatever you're working on, it works on every kind of hair, whether it's short, whether it's long, um, curly or straight or whatever. You can always break it down into locks and smaller shapes. And that is generally, like, the best place to start where you're, when you're learning how to draw hair. Whether you start by, like, drawing the outline of the hair and then kind of filling in the locks within it or just starting with a lock and kind of building your way out. Either way is totally fine as long as you're breaking it down 
into those shapes. Another really important thing to remember is to study how gravity affects hair. It is hard because, you know, a lot of people put product in their hair, which can change kind of how <laughs> gravity affects it or how, say, like the wind affects it or their movement. However, there's general like rules that apply to most hair. You know, gravity is always going to be pulling the hair down. Um, you can look at references to see how wind look or how hair looks when the wind is blowing in it. Like, how does it blow outward? Honestly, the best way to kind of learn that stuff is just to study from life. Because I think intrinsically, you kind of know how hair looks when it's moving and how hair falls because you probably have hair and everyone around you probably has hair. Um, so you can, there's so many points to study from. But yeah, definitely grab reference. Um, I don't think there's any shortcuts to learning how that stuff works except for studying from life. And yeah, like I was saying, hair, always break the hair down into locks first. If you're getting into like shorter hair, like um, I grabbed a few haircuts that had like buzz cuts in them or like hair that was buzzed down really, really short. For that, I usually just use a texture, like a really simplified version of it where it might be dots or it might be little tiny lines to kind of gesture in that there's hair here. Um, just because if you put in too much detail on like really buzzed down hair, it can give the appearance of it being longer than it actually is. But yeah, like, you know, I, f I tried to find a bunch of different hairstyles here that had lots of different textures to them. I think I grabbed like a whole bunch that had like big wavy hair just because that's like my favorite kind of hair texture to draw. Um, just because I love all like the fluid lines in it. But I tried to grab like a few different hair textures just to show you that like you can break them all down into shapes you know whether they're flowy squiggly shapes or if they're like kind of long slopey shapes or really short little hairs whatever you can all break them down into basic shapes and just grab as many references as you, as you can and study as much as you can and you'll start to pick it up as you go and i think it's super important when you're learning how to draw hair uh, to, like, looking at real people's hair is just so important. Because I remember when I started learning how to draw hair, I'd usually go to, like, um, you know, because I was inspired by, like, anime and manga and comics and cartoons. So I would usually go to those to, like, study hair, which is fine. Like, it's a good starting point. Because you can get really, like, simplified versions of hair. But there's definitely some styles where someone has like simplified hair down so much that you kind of lose maybe the shape of the hair if you're trying to like draw off someone else's work. You know, you, you might lose the volume or, um, you know, you might lose like the fluidity or it can, it can get flattened quite a bit so you don't have the form or the shape to the hair that is, that you'll find if you study from life. Um, and so that, that led me to, you know, drawing really shapeless hair and, um, you know, part of that was, like, I didn't understand how hair sat on someone's head or, um, like, I didn't understand what fashionable hair was for a long time. So I would, <laughs> it, like, it felt like I was just drawing random shapes and they looked really, you know, the hairstyles looked really messy and not in, like, a cool messy way. They just looked weird and how would anyone have hair like that? <laughs> Stuff like that would happen to me because I was not studying how things actually looked um, and I was very ignorant about what actual hairstyles look like. <laughs> um, and I'd base them off, like weird anime hairstyles. And there's nothing wrong with, like, weird anime hairstyles or weird cartoon hairstyles or hairstyles that don't physically make sense. Those are fine if that's what you're intending. But what I was trying to do was trying to do cool hair and based off real hair. So I was definitely going to the wrong place by studying off other artists rather than going to study from life. If you're ever struggling with, like, um, stiffness in your hair, like, that, that, problem I mentioned early on about having really stiff hairstyles where it doesn't look like there's much movement or they look like they've been kind of glued, stuck in a shape and don't move. Um, if you really want like the lines to be more fluid 
uh, in, in the locks of hair or the curls. One, it's really important to try and have all of your, your lines happen in one movement. So instead of doing lots of tiny little lines to create one line, make sure you're using one fluid movement. Try to draw with your arm rather than your wrist because it gets like a much more fluid line down. Mix up your curved lines with your straight lines. Um, having the juxtaposition of those two things together can create this illusion of like movement and um, it creates like lots of dynamic shapes within it because um, even when I'm drawing someone who has like long straight hair there's some kind of straight lines there's some curved lines still and if I'm drawing someone with super curly hair the lines are shorter in the curls however they're still curved lines there's still straight lines um, and it just gives it this dynamic movement within it so I hope I hope that helps um, and it I think just adding kind of like volume and following the form of the hair so making sure that it like it feels 3d I guess um, and making sure that like kind of using your lines or your rendering or shading or whatever using that to kind of suggest form in the hair will also help stop the problem of like uh, having it feel really stiff. And honestly, the only way you can do that is by studying from life. I don't really have any super great tips for <laughs> adding form to things without studying from stuff in real life. Oh, and it and it goes for, say, if you're drawing braids as well. Like I said, any kind of hair, any style of hair that you want to draw, any um, length of hair, any like texture of hair, just go in, grab photos, draw what you see. Um, when I was drawing this person's braids, like there are clear shapes that the locks of hair get kind of like woven into and you just have to follow those shapes as best you can. And honestly, a great tool is what I just did where you go over all of the hair, you take a photograph and you go over top of it. Um, and as long as you're not like taking that traced image and claiming it is all your own and not traced at all like i wouldn't do that 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 could get you in trouble but it is it is a valid studying tool um it lets you kind of feel how things how things are shaped um without having to entirely rely on just your eyeballs and your brain to like put down the correct line don't get me wrong it's definitely a good idea to learn how to kind of draw what you see without um tracing over top of things but if you're scared to start tracing over top of something to kind of figure out how it works is totally cool okay so you kind of understand how to draw hair now. You kind of understand, like, how to break it down into forms, how to study, like, how it moves, etc. Well, what do you do if you have a cartoony style or you want to, like, stylize your hair down? Especially if you're drawing comics, you probably want hair that is, like, stylized down so it's easy to draw and repeat. Um, so, what I'd recommend is start by, you know, you've got your reference, you know what kind of hair you want to draw. Break it down into all the lovely locks that you've learned how to draw. For this example, I'm drawing someone with like very kind of wavy long hair. So I break it down into many locks. And for some of you, this may be kind of like where you want to go with your art. And this is a good level of detail. But say you want to make it even more um, stripped down and stylized. Well, what you do is you just pull out some of the detail of those locks. Um, and honestly, this is kind of like Amanda's hair from the magpie, but as you can see, like, you can tell she has wavy hair because of the shapes, um, of, say, like, the locks around her face and the way the hair falls down her back and over her shoulder. It's suggested that there are all these lovely waves, but I've stripped out all of the details uh, on those locks inside of there, um, and you still get the suggestion of those locks. So that is one way to start stylizing things is just start as detailed as you can and then start pulling away details and if you pull away too much and you cannot tell kind of what's going on you can always go back and add more details in um and kind of work backwards from there um i definitely if you're going to do this put all your drawings together so you can kind of track your progress so that if you have a misstep somewhere and you go too far you can always go back to the previous version and try it from there you know iteration is the best way to design things and kind of follow your steps so you can trace back any mistakes that you accidentally made. Don't go deleting your work too soon. Um, and in my second example, it's totally the same thing, just with short hair. Um, you know, draw all those spiky little locks on the hair. Um, and then in the next drawing, pull away more detail. You know, you can get rid of some of the texturing, break it down into like 
just a few spikes instead of lots of little detailed spikes and you still get the same impression of the hair. And here I've even added in like a little bit of, I guess like shape language, which I think kind of happens the more you like strip down uh, details out of a character's naturally they kind of turn into different shapes and you get a little less lost in the details and you focus more on the really stark shapes. Anyways, uh, and if that's still like too much detail, you can get rid of some of those spikes, so you only have one or two. And you still have this impression of, like, spiky hair, however, all the detail's been stripped down, and that's cool. So there you go, you can go as far as you want, or as detailed as you want. There you go, you're just stripping away those details as far as you want. Now, if you want to add in, say, like, shape language, or stylize things more so that they're a little less, you know, you can, you can express the same kind of hair style uh, by using different shapes and they imply different things. So for example, I'm still drawing a character who has long wavy hair, but the shapes here are a bit more spiky, they have more sharp edges, there's like kind of squares and triangles mixed in, um, and that gives you a very different reading of this character and their the, the texture of their hair compared to like the first version of that where you see all the flowing kind of soft looking locks, where these feel a lot more sharper and spiky and spunky, and that it, it, you know, it gives you a very different feel of the character. It could be a very different style uh, for the art or for the character. And, you know, you can still take the same hairstyle and do even another different kind of shape into it and still get the same thing. Um, so for this, I made it like even more bubbly. I kind of rounded off the edges of the hair so they don't end into little points, they kind of turn into little bubbles. And again, it's the same kind of hair, it's still like wavy long hair, but because all the edges are rounded, it feels super different. And it could be a different character or it could just be a different style where things are kind of rounded down more all over the place. So yes, and this applies to any kind of hairstyle that I showed above. Start start drawing from life, strip down some of the details, and then just keep taking out those details and maybe adding, adding in some artistic flair. And there you go, you've got something that's stylized and lovely and unique. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Please tell me if it does not. So yeah, that is kind of how I learned how to draw hair, and I hope you guys have found it helpful. I know a few people have asked about how to draw hair. Yeah, just study what you see. Don't just try and draw what you think hair looks like. Actually go and look at hair, because that will guide you a lot better than just pulling it out of your imagination, even though that doesn't always sound fun, but it's true. And yeah, I feel like adding shape language to any kind of design stuff is a whole other video, but it's definitely one of my favorite parts of learning how to draw anything is kind of learning how to stylize that thing and kind of turn it into its own unique flavor or character by adding different shapes to it. So yeah, that is, that's all, I guess. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Next week, uh, is going to be Bones' video because we're kind of trading off every week. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you for donating to our Kickstarter for the past little bit. That means a lot to us. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments and I will hopefully get to it in a future video. Um, cause I don't, I don't know if I missed something or if you still had questions, but let me know and I want to help you out. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to be doing more tutorials in the future. And, um, I guess go check out our Patreon or our store if you ever want to see more cool stuff that we do. And get lots of cool perks on our Patreon or buy our books. Anyways, I'm going to go. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!